Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, and today, thanks to our friends at Jay-Z Microphones, we get to look into some mic techniques for piano. I'm here in front of a really nice grand piano, a Steinway from the 1940s at the Putney School over in Vermont. We are in their Calder Hall, and we have the privilege today of hearing a young virtuoso by the name of Will Swist, who's going to be playing some excerpts for us so we can hear a handful of different mic techniques. For these mic techniques, I'm using nothing but Jay-Z microphones. Right now, I'm talking into other Amethyst microphones, but I'm also going to be using these black hole microphones, which are just really clean, natural, neutral sounding mics. And then these Amethysts are maybe a little richer, a little fuller, a little bit more like a vintage mic design. And what I really want to give you today are a set of principles for recording piano. It's not really about one precise mic placement that's going to be right in every case. It's about knowing how to think about miking pianos so that you can go in with a strategy for miking your piano, a good starting place, and then start making changes based on what you're hearing back from the speakers. So there's a couple of main paradigms here for recording piano. There are distant approaches and there are close approaches. And often, a lot of pianos that you'll hear will make use of both of these kinds of approaches. When it comes to distant approaches, we could be six feet or more back from the piano using a spaced pair. Or we'll often record pianos a little bit closer in using a coincident mic technique. So we might be nine feet out or six feet out or three feet out from the piano using a mic technique where the capsules are practically touching, like an XY technique. Or one of my favorites, ORTF, where the capsules are about six to seven inches apart and angled out a little more than 90 degrees, about 110 degrees, often really nice on piano. And then there are the close mic techniques, which become especially relevant when we're talking more about pop productions, where all of a sudden getting a really close, almost hyper-real piano sound is the goal. In general, the techniques where we're a little further back from the piano will give us a more realistic image of the piano. But sometimes, to those of us with tastes that come from rock and pop and hip-hop and R&B, natural sounds a little too humble. And getting up close with our piano mics is a good way to go. In those cases, we can use some of those coincident techniques like an XY or an ORTF or a mid-side technique. But what's really popular and probably one of the most popular close-up piano techniques is going to be what's called an AB pair. This is a special take on spaced pair really just for piano. A lot of people think about miking the hammers when it comes to piano. And that can be a valid technique if you want a more percussive sound, a really tight or thin piano that's really meant to cut through a mix. And we'll explore miking the hammers too. But when you're looking for more of a natural piano sound that captures the full body of the piano while still having a close and present sound, we're usually miking more in the soundboard with one microphone over each of the two string groups of the piano. If you look inside a piano, you'll see that the treble and mid-range strings here kind of go in one direction, and the bass strings kind of cross over them in another direction. And spacing the microphones over each of those string groups can be a great way to go. And there's no one right way to do this A-B technique. You can angle them in slightly, you can do them straight down, you can do it at a distance of as close as maybe six inches to as far as maybe a foot away. And we'll listen to a few different techniques there. You can go wider if you want a more artificial stereo spread. You can go a little closer in if you want it to sound a little tighter and more focused. But be aware that if you go too close in, Breaking the three to one rule of thumb, you could potentially run into phase issues when you're folding down your mics into mono. To be really safe with stereo configurations, those coincident techniques where the mic capsules are practically touching, those usually fold down to mono really well, but they're not always as impressive and as wide as more of a spaced technique. So, to recap, we've got our really distant approaches where we might be using a spaced pair far away from the piano, three feet, six feet, nine feet, or further back, with the mics very far apart from one another. We've got the coincident approaches where we're taking maybe an XY or an ORTF. Often right here where this curve of the piano is, is a great place to look at putting those kinds of mic setups. You could do that six feet out from the piano for more natural roomy sound. 
You could do that three feet out from the piano. You could do it right here at this lip of the piano, or you could even do it slightly inside, depending on how much proximity you want versus how much space you want out of the piano sound. But be aware that once you start getting close into the piano, probably one of the most popular and effective mic techniques, particularly for pop and rock and R&B and other styles, is the kind of A-B technique, where we're maybe six inches or more above the strings with each mic over one of the major string groups. And that sound often sounds kind of instantly like a popular music record to me, much more like a top 40 kind of approach to recording piano right out of the gate. And again, when we want to get really close, you can potentially go over the hammers. This gives you a very unnatural sound. But there's benefit sometimes in having an unnatural sound, particularly if you're trying to fit piano into a really dense rock or pop or hip hop or R&B mix. You often need that thing to sound really thin, really tight, really bright. We're often getting rid of tons of low end. And all that really comes through is the percussive elements of the piano and the melodic elements of the piano. And miking closer to the hammers can give us more of that while miking further back out into the soundboard can give us a little bit more of the richness and sustain of the piano. A couple other notes I want to throw at you. In the more classical realm, where we're looking to get a more natural piano sound and make it really feel like it's in a real space, we're often using more omni microphones. Or beautiful technique on piano, if you love the sound of the room you're in, is bloom line, in which you use an XY but a bi-directional pattern. Today, I've got a couple of microphones that we're going to be using in cardioid pattern, just to cut down on the number of variables and keep the number of examples I'm going to give you somewhat manageable. But just know that other polar patterns can be fantastic for piano, especially when you're recording solo piano or classical piano. Right now, we've picked a classical selection to listen to, but one that's kind of fast and upbeat and really tonic sounding. So you can kind of still get a sense for how things would sound in more of a pop context as well. So I think there's a great piece selection to allow us to get a feel for what pop piano might sound like while also still being relevant to classical. And when it comes to classical and jazz, you're probably going to err more towards the slightly more distant mic approaches that make the piano sound a little bit more natural, a little bit more realistic. And when you do more pop and rock and contemporary popular genres, you're more likely to use some of the closer mic techniques. But there are no rules here. It is very context dependent, it's very genre dependent, and it's very much dependent on the goals for that particular recording. Solo pianos that are meant to stand up by themselves and be the main instrument that's going to carry us through the song, Man, those you might want to do a slightly more natural approach where we're getting the whole feel of the piano. And we might want to use four mics for that kind of situation where we have two microphones, maybe in a close coincident pair or a close AB technique, and maybe two further microphones, picking up the ambience and fullness of the room itself. For more of a solo classical performance, maybe relying a little bit more on those more distant microphones. And for a jazz performance, it kind of could be Either way, depending on the instrumentation, how many players are in the room together, how much bleed you have to deal with, and so on. But again, it's not really about one mic technique that's going to be your favorite. It's going to be so context dependent. So really the goal here is to listen and learn what each of these different mic positions sound like so that you can use them as a potential starting point for your own piano recordings. We've got some beautiful microphones to do that with. In general, when it comes to the closer and kind of brighter sounding piano mic approaches we're going to go for, I'm going to use these kind of brighter and more natural and open sounding black hole microphones from Jay-Z. Wonderful mics. Definitely check them out over at jayzmic.com. And for the more thick and full bodied sounding microphone approaches, I'm going to use these slightly fuller, thicker sounding amethyst microphones. So we can really kind of accentuate some of the kinds of differences we're going to hear. Big thanks again to Jay-Z for providing these microphones and partnering with us on this video. Big thanks to the Putney School for having us here. And big thanks to a young piano virtuoso who we're going to hear from named William Swist. Absolutely gorgeous playing here. Can't wait for you to hear it. Let's dive right in and hear some of these mic techniques together.
All right. I hope you enjoyed listening to these mic techniques along with us. Let us know in the comments down below, what were your favorites from this particular session, in this particular room, with this particular piano, and in your own sessions, what have been your favorite approaches? The answer to those two questions might be different depending on the kinds of genres you're working in, the type of arrangement and production you're currently working on, and what sounded best for this piece on this piano, in this room, in this context of solo piano, might be totally different than what works in your mix. Last quick note I want to give you is today we've been playing with the piano lid open like this, which is generally the way that you're going to play. There are some miking strategies that allow you to actually close the lid of the piano, but in my experience, some of the most beautiful recorded piano sounds come from taking the lid of the piano off completely. Not something I wanted to do today to the uh, beautiful old Steinway here at the Putney School, but if you have access to your own piano, you're really serious about getting a great sound and you want to do some experimenting, try unscrewing the lid taking it off completely. And I find that often enhances the approaches where we're either doing a spaced AB pair inside the piano or doing some type of coincident pair that's pretty close in to the piano. Well, get trying out some of these techniques for yourself. Again, let us know about your favorite in the comments below. And if you're looking for a good mic, these Jay-Z's sound awesome. So big thanks to those guys. And big thanks to you for hanging out with us today. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.